G'day guys, this clip is taken from a two hour long interview with Sam from the Worldwide Warhammer podcast, where we talk all things WTC and Team Australia. If you'd like to see the full interview, check out the links in the description below. And with that being said, let's get into it. Walk for the Blood God. I guess, how were the vibes after, I guess, day four? So obviously, we're playing for the podium, and then unfortunately, we end in 11th, which is just the brutality of the Swiss system in some ways. Yes. So I guess, how did the team feel afterwards, essentially? Uh, there was mixed feelings. Um, so the, the way, so last year, Team Australia came third, and we actually had the inverse of what we had this year. Last year, we didn't verse any of the top teams, and we were able to essentially submarine our way into third. And in reality, we probably deserved like fifth. And this sure, year, yeah. we versed all of the top teams. And as a result, we came 11th, when in reality, we probably deserved something like fifth, right? So yeah. we've actually experienced both sides of that Swiss brutality, as you call it. Like the fact that, you know, we, we flew so close to the sun that we went full Icarus and it erupted into flames on that last day. It's like, yeah. well, that happens, right? And as far as I'm concerned, when I look back on the event, and this is something that I really tried to instill in the team because some of the team were a bit disappointed with the 11th place. Of course. Um, but one of the things I just kept reminding him is like, first thing is it doesn't matter what the rest of the world thinks. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. All that matters is what you think. Are you proud? of your results that's all that matters because you years from now no one's going to care no one's going to even think about it but you will you will remember when you went to wtc and you'll remember what your results were so are you proud of them and then my sort of rationale is that well we only lost two rounds one of them was into the people who won this year and the other was into yeah. the people who won last year. So it's like, well, it's yeah. pretty hard to make the argument that those are disappointing results. Like that's perfectly acceptable to lose to the people who win. Like that's yeah. standard, right? And then the draw that we got into Team Spain was effectively a win, right? Like it could have been very well have been turned into a win had we yeah. recorded our scores accurately. So in reality, we beat everybody with the exception of the champions so yeah. i'm exceptionally proud of that especially given that most of the people on our team had never even been to wtc before had never played at that level so going from you know never having played at that level to being able to only lose to literal world champions like yeah. you know it's, that's it's if, if if you've never boxed before and you go into a boxing championship and the only person that can knock you out is Muhammad Ali, it's like, that's be proud of that. Like, I don't care what the end placings are. If you were able to go yeah. in and, and, and perform up to that level, then hold your head high and be very proud of yourself. And I'm exceptionally proud of this team and what we were able to achieve. And that 11th place finish, I'm not even remotely disappointed in that. No, that's, that's a good reason to hold, I get, I, I guess, good virtue and good, um, uh, I guess, belief you have to hold. So it makes a lot of sense why you hold it. And as you said, you uh, lost to the people who came first and the people who came third and won last year, then drew into second. But you have a small win, right? You recall that in yeah. your Goonhammer tabletop battles up. We got a win there, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, sure. there's WTC. Oh, I got a 10 10. I lost in singles, but. I, I got a win. I got a win in singles, right? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> one yeah, of those exactly. sort of situations. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, fantastic. So, um, obviously, you touched on before a couple of times. Of, unfortunately, uh, got two O twenties with the Terminators, and there was a lot of talk online about the thirty Terminators. They're bad. They're horrible. What is it being doing? <laughs> we throw an event. So, I guess like, upon reflection, how did you think the Terminators were? Do you think? They did as good as expected or not as good as expected or better than expected even? Uh, probably better than expected. Okay. The Terminators okay. themselves, that data sheet, is actually really, really powerful. It's actually amazing. Um, and I think that what people, have, what people have mistakenly done with that data sheet is they've looked at it and compared it to the 8-bound data sheet and they've gone, well, 8-bound have a better feel, no pain. 8-bound have an extra pip of toughness. 8-bound have... You know, like just purely on profile, the eight bound appear to be significantly better. But there's a few like 
real hidden elements to that data sheet that people underestimate. One of them is that it's a unit of 10 as opposed to a unit of six, right? And that's not a stat that's on the profile that people really consider when comparing units, but it's actually a really critical stat because what that means is that if you come out with your 10 Terminators and they overwatch you and kill three of them, well, now you're charging with seven Terminators, right? Whereas yeah. if you come out... Left off, so um, brick at 10, like, when you lose three to overwatch, you still have seven. There's a quantity and a mass of the boys... Yeah, well, the, so the beautiful thing is, is that like if you go in and you've if you lose three eight bound to Overwatch, well now you're only connecting yeah. with three eight bound, which is probably not enough to kill the target that you're charging, right? Sure. Whereas if you connect with seven Terminators, that is enough. And also the Terminators' data sheet ability is they get plus one to hit when they're below starting strength. So you actually kind of want them to Overwatch you so that they kill yeah. a couple, so that you go in with plus one to hit. And when you tell your opponent that, they often just don't Overwatch you because they don't want you sure. to get that plus one hit, which means you're just connecting with all 10 Terminators. And 10 Terminators does way more damage than even six eight bound do. So sure. it's actually a significantly more powerful unit. And it's also significantly yeah. more durable because they've got the two up armor save, they've got the four up invulnerable save, which works out roughly on par with the eight bounds, three up, five up, five up feel no pain. It works out roughly yeah. the same, depending on what's attacking you, of course. But the fact that you've got 10 of them, it just means that they, that unit can take an absolute pummeling and still be at combat effective strength. So when we sort of first set out to do this, it was actually back at ANZTC where we wanted to create a list that could flip, a world leaders list that could flip Death Guard matchups. We knew Death Guard yeah. have fight on, they have fight first and they have Savage Overwatch. And we're like, so Death Guard are going to hunt world leaders players thinking that they're going to just put Plague Marines out and be like, cool, we fight first. What are you going to do? Charge us and die? No. You know, and we also have brutal overwatch. So what are you gonna do? Like you just can't charge us. So we're like, if we can create a list that can flip that matchup, then we're in. And the terminators were how we did it. And we basically wrote the list, and the best thing in the list was the terminators. Everything else underperformed, but the terminators overperformed. So then we're like, well, what if you took two units of terminators? Then we yeah. did that for a few practice games, and then we're like, you know what, what if you just took three and you just went full on, let's just take 30 Terminators and like the rest of the team swore me to secrecy and it was so agonizing for me because I have a YouTube channel where I talk world leaders, <laughs> tactics and strategies and yeah. I'm sitting on this absolute gold mine of a unit that everybody thinks is bad, but that's because yeah. they've misunderstood the, the very fact that there's 10 of them. They just, because that's not immediately apparent on the data sheet, people don't talk about it. I'm like, but that's actually completely flips the way this unit works i really wanted to do videos talking about it but they swore me to secrecy because they're like people will not see this coming and they yeah. will not know what to do they will have no idea what to do when they get paired into it oh well, there we go and well now that yeah well, so you go ahead Dean. yeah, well, yeah, there yeah you go. i'm just gonna say it worked perfectly for us oh there we go so well people you're still wrong so 30 yeah. terminators is still legit and then um all, all the youtube tactics and stuff for dean's channel so uh Blog yep. for the blood god. I'm gonna apologies. I always get it. Um, so I've got definitely some dyslexia of some sorts with that channel name. Apologies, but uh, blog yeah, no, for the blood it's, god it's, it's not a great channel name. Even I get it wrong. <laughs> Even I get it wrong, man. Um, the, the, the last thing to just touch on with the with the terminators is people will look at my results and they will see that I I won three games, lost three games, and got a draw. So I basically came out as a wash. I wasn't an asset, but I wasn't a liability to the team. I got as many wins as losses, and I got a draw in there as well. So, you know, overall, I performed, you know, mediocre, let's say. Um, yeah. But it's worth noting that, like, this was my first ever WTC, and I'm, I, I'm not an egomaniac. I wouldn't say that I'm at the same caliber as Duda from Poland, right? Like, sure. But I was able to get a draw into Duda from Poland. So that just goes to show that this list does have teeth and that, you know, it's got definitely got the legs to push through those hard matchups. There's a few things about it, a few key weaknesses to the list that I'm looking at, you know, changing for, for upcoming events. One of them being that there's no fly keyword in the list. So <laughs> that's a real big problem. If your opponent can move block you, you just can't win. Um, yeah. So working on getting Angron back in, taking Khan out, the 30 Terminators stay. They are the staple of my lists going forward. And I also just, I'm not going to lie, the fact that it was such a meme and the fact that everybody was spazzing out over it 
was very satisfying. <laughs> it was very, very satisfying. Oh, well, your inner troll is very satisfied. I'm sure it's like, well, people think yeah. it's bad. Let me prove them wrong. So good on yeah. you, man. And glad to hear that you think it overperformed or did better than expectations, which is always nice to hear for quote unquote yeah. meme list. So yeah, our old pe- people will see it in an RTT or a GT coming next near you with fly keyword added (laughs) (laughs) so i guess so obviously preparing for the wtc it's a lot of work a lot of preparation um from so cal in the discord asked a question so um if you're going to the wtc in three months time what would you have done differently in the prep stages to what was done to or what to what was done essentially uh the only thing that i would do differently is i would probably knowing the strength of the team now i would have put more effort into practicing into poland usa and england um because they they obviously they're three of the the top teams um interestingly any practice we put into england and usa would have been wasted um but we probably undercooked the poland um prep we could have done a little bit more there um but overall, I think most of our decisions and the, the philosophy behind them and our overall strategy on everything from team selection all the way up to list writing and faction selection, all the way up to the, the way that we did our boot camps and our practice and the way that we managed the trip in terms of when we flew and what we did while we were there. And I think all of that worked exactly as planned and worked really well. The, I guess the 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 results are reflective of the fact that we had a very green team this year there's not much you can do about that yeah um you know when 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 the outgoing team has a max exodus where they're all burnt out and tired and and have a well-deserved rest like you know a lot of the players from the last year's team were were multi-year veterans if they want to take a break then i 100 percent respect that um but when you have that and you have a whole bunch of new people going in like I think it would be a little bit too ambitious to think that you were going to perform better than we did, you know? Course, so I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't take this result and then think, oh, we didn't get on the podium, therefore we did something wrong. I don't think that's the appropriate way to look at it. I think we did everything well and everything as, as well as we could. It was just a matter of building that experience. And if, if WTC was three months from now, I would just be like, same team, same lists, everything identical let's just go at it again with with the same attitude but a little bit more experience and maybe a little bit less ice cream that's about it <laughs> maybe don't don't have two, a layer of ice cream before some important rounds do your double yeah. dessert but let me reduce the quantities a little bit yeah right? just, just keep, two, two small two, desserts you know <laughs> two small yeah lot two uh, lot of family size liter of ice cream yeah. before <laughs> yeah a couple uh, tim tams you know that's enough <laughs> there you go yeah yeah there you go so um, I guess, and so when you talk about the prep and practice, was it just sort of, if you were to do it again, just sort of, sort of I want to understand what that looks like. Because I know a lot of teams said, look, they prepped and practiced really fucking hard for this WTC, but and it was too much. Like, it was so much that they reached the upper limit. So I guess, yeah. how would you have fit that in, in terms of prep and practice? Or would that, or would you have, like, sacrificed some things on the pod stage to do so, essentially? Well, I, I'm a huge believer in trusting your team to know what's yeah. right for them uh, because sure. every everybody's different and some people they can play 40k every night of the week and not burn out whereas some people like me i, I actually i don't pre- play a great deal of practice games and maybe this is to my detriment but i i get exhausted fast like i, I get sure. tired of it very fast and i perform much better when i'm excited to play the game as yep. opposed to when I feel obligated to play the game, you know? So sure. um, so for me, it's like one practice game, maybe two practice games a week is is basically where I tap out because I'm just like, sure. okay, at, 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 at that point, it stops being something that I'm doing for fun and something that I'm doing because I'm passionate about and it becomes something that I'm doing because I have something to prove or that I have, you know, some chip on my shoulder or whatever. And it's like I perform way better in the former than the, than the latter. So... For me, that's that's my level. But but for other people, their level is they want to be playing tabletop simulator against people from all around the world every night of the week. So my philosophy was just you practice at you at whatever speed you're comfortable with, you know. Um, and I would stick with that because, like you just said, some people would have found that they burn out too fast because 
their captain is saying, no, you need to be getting in three games a week minimum and you need to be reporting back and you need to be playing into specific things. And you, like, I find that as soon as you start doing that, you suck a lot of the fun out of it. And then when you suck the fun out, you sort of suck the oxygen out of the fire and it just goes out. Whereas if you go, yeah. no, I want you guys to have fun. I want you guys to be doing what you're passionate about. And I want you to be doing it because you're passionate about it, not because there's, you know, some rule that you have to play this many practice games or attend these specific events. You know, I don't, I don't think any of that has any particular value. Like in the lead up to the event, there was a teams event that we had an opportunity to attend, but a number of the players on the team decided that we'd rather, instead of attending that event, we'd rather just get together for garage games and yeah. play into each other because in that one day we could play five or six half games and, and work out the specifics on how are we going to deploy this world leaders terminator list? How does the deployment look on two or three different maps? We can work that sure. out and have conversations. Whereas if I just go and play at a tournament and get paired on tables that are not reflective of what I'm going to be aiming for. And then I get results that are not reflective of what we're going to be aiming for. There's not as much value. So just giving every individual the full autonomy to pick how they want to do it and then as much support as possible, I think it's the best way to go. Yeah, that's very fair. It's a very, obviously, um, you get, put a lot of trust and belief in your players to do the best thing. And I think there's a lot of value and reason to doing so. Yes, you may get burned once or twice. Like some players may not realize yeah. what the level of effort's required. And you're going to, sometimes you're going to get burnt like that. But mm -hmm. by doing so, I think it's a very strong reason. And you give them the belief and ability to practice in their best environment and obviously you avoid them burning up prior to the most important event right but like the worst thing yeah. can happen is they're so fucking sick of 40k before they hit the wtc where it actually really matters so yeah or even just if they get sick of it halfway through the event right like they yeah, might exactly. be like they might be firing on all pistons during the boot camp and they think that they're gonna like go go nuts and enjoy it the whole way through but then halfway through the event they they hit the wall you know yeah. And I was like, no matter what happens, I want that wall to be on the other side of the entire event. You know, I want yeah. you to hit that wall when you get back into Melbourne, like what I've done, right? Like that's yeah. when you hit the wall. Um, yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, like we've selected these people for a reason. They're, you know, the best people that, that we have. So why would I then try to tell them what to do? If I'm going to tell them what to do, why did I select them? And of course, for the for the less experienced people, we did rely heavily on Jeremy and Matt Marsoli talking about you know what to expect and and how to approach it and that sort of stuff and giving guidance. But it was always coming from a position of here's our our thoughts and our opinions. Do with them what you will, you know. But yeah. I think you should be practicing more, or I think you need to relax a bit, that sort of stuff. But it was always coming from a here's our thoughts. Do with it what you will. Yeah, that's very good and very wise words said. So I'm sure a lot of people will take away from that. Um, another question we have, so in the question section of, I guess, the show, uh, Greg, uh, so Australia traditionally haven't done international scrims in the lead up to the WTC. Did this year hold true as well? Or were there some international scrims we are unaware of? Uh, the closest we had was into Team New Zealand. They flew down for the ANZ TC. Uh, and yeah. what we did is we organised for them to fly in a day early. Um, and we had a scrim there where we played basically two rounds. Um, but as you've seen in this, the uh, internet connection in Australia isn't all that crash hot. <laughs> so, um, no, a lot of our players, yeah, a lot of our players really don't participate in tabletop simulator much. Um, so there's not a great deal of opportunities for us to do that. Uh, but I actually think that one of Australia's sort of low key superpowers is the fact that we don't participate in those international scrims. Yes, it's a detriment that we don't get to play against those top players, but we have some really, really competent players here in Australia that we can play into. And because yeah. we're relatively insulated, a lot of the, the tech that we work on remains secretive. And a lot of our play styles remain secretive. And as a result, we're able to pull off these things on that international stage that people don't really expect. Whereas like everybody looked at team France this year and were like, they were going in heavy favorites because they'd been doing such amazing work in all of the scrims and stuff. And then the other thing that happens is they all end up copying each other's list ideas and stuff to the point where you get this sort of, sort of bland, not, not criticizing yeah, yeah, yeah. anyone here, but like you get sort of bland lists that are very cookie cutter. And that means that you've got an established meta 
that we from the outside can then solve that meta and then come in with fresh lists that really combat the establishment. So like we noticed that Blood Angels was super popular, right? In all of these events yeah. that we were watching overseas. So we were like, okay, well, we're going to do two things. We're not going to take Blood Angels because they're super popular. So everyone should be planning on how to beat Blood Angels. So we're not going to take them. We're going to take Space Wolves instead. And also my list was designed so that if they put Blood Angels into me, I take it because the my list has a really, really good matchup into Blood Angels because I can basically do nothing for the first two turns, save up enough command points that when they collapse on me, I can put neg one damage on one unit so they do no nothing really there, and then I can interrupt the other unit and clap them back. And as a result, they just can't really interact with the 30 Terminators because either way, they're going to end up losing units. So we developed specific tech for countering them whilst not falling into the trap of trying to use the tech that they had developed, that they have mastered, and that they probably know better than we do. So I think that's one of the advantages of not engaging in those sorts of scrims. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, it would be nice, I guess, if we, if we were able to, if we were local to Europe and we were able to get on a train and go to another country as opposed to having to get on a plane just to go to another city <laughs> like we have to do here in Australia. You know, it yeah, would be yeah. nice if we were able to do that. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's that big of a detriment not being able to participate in scrims. Sure. So you don't think, obviously, for maybe moving forward, the Team Australia approach will be to do more international TTS scrims or try and look for more international scrims? You think we'll just keep it to the same regime? Yeah, I, th I think, yeah. And obviously, we have, we have some people on the team that do like Tabletop Simulator, and by all means, they're encouraged to, to participate in those international tournaments and stuff. But as far as, like, Team Australia as a whole getting together to participate in Tabletop Simulator, I don't see that ever really being a thing. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, uh, it would be interesting to see how this, like obviously this sort of the first or one, one or two years of this whole TTS in, um, development sort of happened, I would say. Like obviously yeah. it happened during the COVID times, a lot of people played TTS, but this whole, a lot of TTS practice and scrims being widely public and a lot of work done, it'd be interesting, interesting to see what approach sort of maps out because I guess there's different philosophies of thought and a whole other discussion entirely. So yeah. Um yeah. uh obviously conscious of time so get through the rest of the questions we have here and then hopefully wrap things up. Um so we have a question from Nari Wilson so who was the captain from Team New Zealand last year. So she obviously is uh making a bit of a dance so asking so given the success of the New Zealand team and their top 10 place or top 10 placing which is higher than Australia what lessons could Australia learn to be as good as them? <laughs> <laughs> well, the one thing that they did that I was very envious of is they won the best sports this year. And that's something that Team Australia had, we literally had our sights set on that and we went to great lengths to try to win that. So I'm very jealous of, of that title that they, they were able to secure. Uh, in terms of them placing higher than us, um, come back when you have to verse France and Poland and Spain, like come back when you verse people on the podium. <laughs> um, but no, I was, I was very, very proud. We, we actually have a really strong relationship, the Team New Zealand, the Team Australia. Like we stayed at the same hotel. We were having breakfast together every morning. You know, we, we workshop with each other a lot. We, we develop lists together. Like we didn't work like super close and share everything, but we do have that, that, that kinship with them. So seeing them, you know, perform the way they did. I was very proud to see that. Yeah, more than fair. And look, uh, Nari, like maybe when you guys beat Austria, you can guys can talk some shit, right? The only like, <laughs> matchup that happened right was Austria. I think if I if my memory serves yeah. correctly, where you guys beat them and they felt those drew 80 80. So just win next time. But no, yeah. kudos to Team New Zealand. They did an amazing effort and have a lot of good friends on that team. So that's an amazing effort and achievement and looking forward to see how they go next year and continue to develop that Australian-New Zealand rivalry for sure. And we'll win yeah. that drinking competition in years to come for sure as well or whatever yeah. competition takes place. Um, so next question that we have is from Cal. So he said that Poland indicated that they had as many as 30 non-travelling players who helped in the prep for WTC. Uh, how many players were involved in the team Oz prep that were not traveling? Um, well, on, on an official level, we only had the four coaches as well as the players, and all of them traveled. Um, yeah. I, I'm a huge fan of making sure that the team is in, as inclusive as possible, and anybody who wants to get involved with Team Australia is 
absolutely more than welcome. And you know, we, we try to make sure that we're involved with the community as much as possible. That being said, I also think there's a lot of merit to having all of the officially announced members of the team travel with the team and function as a team. The last thing I want is like a chat that's got 30 people in it, all yelling opinions at each other over the top of the players, over the top of the officially announced coaches and sort of drowning it out. And we've all been in those 30 man chats where it ends up being just memes and shit talking the whole time. I, I would much rather go, you know what, all of the people that have been officially announced as players or as coaches, official members of the team, they are in this chat and we're going to try to keep it as you know, official and serious as possible. And they are there to represent the nation and they are there to travel. And that's part of the, the, you know, the package we could have reached out and, and included, you know, sent shirts to and included a whole bunch of people and said, you're all team Australia. We're all team Australia. But it's like, at that point, you know, it becomes way harder to manage on, on the captain level, because now all of a sudden you've got of all course. these other personalities. And what happens if there's a sportsmanship issue with one of those people? Now all of a sudden the Team Australia represent, uh, rep, uh, what's the word? Um, God, I've drawn a blank there. Reputation is the word I'm looking for. The Team Australia <laughs> reputation is it potentially jeopardized. I think it's much better to just go, cool, these 12 people are Team Australia this year. And then we have a whole bunch of people that we collaborate with, which I think is yeah. the healthiest way to do it. That's pretty fair, um, and it's a, a fair sentiment. So, obviously, you can only expand the net so far before you just dilute everything. And um, yeah. I can definitely attest to those 30-man Facebook chats. You just mute them because it's, it's yeah. too much. It's too much too, <laughs> too often at a time. They're great. Yeah. They're so the purpose, half of the time, there's much. only one person that comments in it, and they fill it with just useless information that just drowns everything of relevance out, and you're like, why is this even a thing? So I was not interested in in creating that. Uh, however, because Australia is so spread out, there was obviously pockets of community. So, for example, we had Josh Brody in New South Wales. He was working closely with previous attendees. Like he had Chris Wright over for games. They were practicing their developing list together. So even though Chris Wright wasn't on the team this year, he was very instrumental to our results and we're eternally yeah. grateful for his help. And I think that's one thing about Australia is that everybody wants to help Team Australia perform as best as possible. I think a lot of Australians have a little bit of an underdog sort of view of themselves where, you know, the rest of the world is so much bigger than us. They forget about us. We're tucked away in the corner. So when Team Australia does well, everybody wants them to do well and everybody's helping. Yeah. Whereas I feel like maybe some of the other teams is a little bit more like contention in, oh, I should have been on the team or, you know, that sort of stuff. And there's a little bit more animosity within their nation. Whereas I think Australia is very, very supportive of each other and, as a result, you know, when we're doing, like we did a bunch of fundraiser events where we invited everyone to come play games, a, a portion of the, the revenue from the event went towards sending Australia off and we had massive support for that. And we did like little seminars at the end of the event to say thank you. And we taught these people you know, from our experience and from our competitive you know, background, we taught them some tips and tricks. And the amount of people that were engaging in that sort of stuff was really inspiring. So I think even though we didn't have an official squad that exceeded outside of the 12, it was definitely a community effort that a lot of Australia participated in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's uh, great to hear. And um, yeah, uh, kudos. I don't have any more to say. So, uh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, thank you very much, Dean, for this lovely chat. It's been an amazing topic and an amazing conversation. I could go on for another couple of hours of talking more and more and more, um, but we'll save that for another time, and I'm sure yep. there'll be other people who recap it. So I guess to wrap things up, so for those interested in Team Australia, um, where can they display their interest or what can it be involved maybe for the next campaign? Like, What does the future look like? Well, uh, so if you want more information about Team Australia, we've actually got a website, teamoz40k.com.au. I believe it's got the .au on there. Yeah, uh, but if you just Google Team .au. Australia, that'll pop up. Um, that's got a lot of information. There's some really cool stuff on there. That's got the honor roll of all of the previous teams and all of the members that have ever played to represent Team Australia. It's also got some information about our team selection process, information about the WTC itself. So if you want to learn more about it, that's a fantastic place to go. Uh, and if you want to get in touch with us, then Team Australia on Facebook is probably your best bet. Um, or you can reach out to me privately or, or whatever, um, or any of the members, really. Um, and we're more than happy to have those conversations and, and try to get involved. Um, and basically, the main way that we were sort of 
do that engagement is through tournaments. You know, most of the Team Australia members attend almost every tournament they can get their hands on. So don't be afraid to come up to one of us and, you know, give us a pat on the back and be like, thanks for representing us. I'd love to be involved and, and we can have a conversation about how what that looks like. And that'll vary from person to person. Yeah, sweet. So what does the future look like? Are you going to try and go back as captain or take a step back or still decide to um, be decided? I, I don't even want to entertain that question at the moment because I'm so <laughs> exhausted from, from the sure. trip itself. I did have an absolute blast and the entire team is begging me to stay on as captain. They really want, because obviously we had such an amazing trip. Everybody had a good time and we all were very proud of our results. So there's a strong sentiment within the team to not change anything. Uh, that being said, uh, my only answer is going to be no comment because I don't really want to uh, commit to anything given that right now I'm so burnt out and exhausted that I just want to curl up in my doona and not think <laughs> about 40K for the next month. <laughs> and I just want to just fair enough. You know, unpack it and then sort of see where I am. Where, you know, there's, life gets involved. There's there's plenty of reasons to go, but there's also plenty of reasons that could prevent me from going again. So, yeah, yeah I don't want to make any commitments on that front at this stage. More, more than fair. I guess we'll just keep... Uh... A close eye on what the team was 40k facebook page and the yeah. website looks like and we'll find out in the future so um thank you very much dean for this conversation it's been wonderful and amazing conversation uh, any final plugs or shout outs you'd like to make before we wrap things up uh yeah there's a few one one i will do is just a quick thank you to all of our sponsors this year we had a lot of really good support we did a big raffle where you know emperor gap games uh emerald hobbies uh proxy wars what are the other ones? There was a bunch of people that donated goods that we were able to raffle off, which did a huge job towards funding the team to go over. So we really appreciate all of the support we get there. Uh, the Gaming Arena, who hosted a bunch of the Victorian fundraiser events, um, they were instrumental to us being able to afford what we could do. So really appreciative of all of our sponsors. That's one shout out. Uh, the other one is the Risky Rollers. They were on board as our major sponsor this year. They donated significant funds towards the team, and they also did the live streams for us. They did all of the social media content. And over on their YouTube channel, just put in Risky Rollers and check out their channel, they actually did a vlog of every part of the trip. So everything from getting on the plane to what we were eating ice cream, but also updates throughout the rounds, interviews with all the players. So if you want to get to know Team Australia, checking out their YouTube channel is going to be a great way to do it. Uh, so yeah, they did some really awesome stuff. Uh, it would be silly for me to not plug my channel, which is Blog for the Blood God, B-L-O-G for the Blood God, um, which is a World Eaters themed, Chaos Space Marine themed uh, tactics and you know channel talking about all that sort of stuff. I've actually got an eight part series that I'm, in the process of writing the script for, which is going to be talking about the WTC in detail. I'm going to go through every round. I'm going to have graphics up showing where deployment was and how it all worked and what the list was about and the philosophy behind it. So that's going to be a doozy. Um, so if you want to learn a little bit more about the way that we went about the team selection and stuff, that's all going to be included in that. So check out my channel. Um, what else is there? Um, I'm certain I've forgotten plenty of things because we had such broad community support. So I guess I'll just cover the rest with a cover all. Thank you to the, all of the community for, for all of their support. Um, and thank you for having me on the channel. It was, it was a fantastic chat. I really enjoyed it. No worries. More than happy. And I look forward to watching the eight part series. I'm sure that wasn't done on purpose, right? Well, <laughs> yeah. I, actually... <laughs> I had it at nine and I was like, nine, no, surely I can merge two of these videos and make it an eight part series. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Got to keep on theme, right? So um, yeah, no, thank absolutely. you for the chat. It's been wonderful. Um, a shout out to the partners, right? Without the friends and family yeah. and the support, that's that's the biggest one. That's why we get to always oh, absolutely, uh, sometimes yeah. forget. So I uh, really, really appreciate it. And thank you for everyone listening. Uh, this has been a monster episode. And uh, look, if you want more great detailed content, check out Dean's channel, blog for the blood god and then definitely check out the risky rollers vlogs i definitely enjoy them and I went through like almost a casey neistat-esque vlog journey of watching them all back again so it was yeah. great so <laughs> really really appreciate it and thanks uh for everything and enjoy take care everyone um and for the blood god